Swapnil has worked in the industry of gaming and animation, mostly gaming, for quite some time. Swapnil will be speaking about the the very very techniques of visual storytelling you know the very important part of Swapnil's talk is that he comes from an industry which is active where they do not practice anything ideal they actually implement and that is the importance of uh, Mr. Swapnil's uh, presence over here Swapnil is a CEO of his own co own company, who is running a company right now. He will be sharing his ideas, experience, and learning that he has earned to more than five years uh, from now. Please listen to him. We need to learn from people who are working at the ground. He is a person who comes from the ground, right? who tests his idea on the ground. All right. So that's all I want to say. And I again, I, I am asking, please forward message to all of the students to join immediately. All right. Yes. And Swapnil, may I? you know, give the, you know, stage to you to perform and, and, and put forward your views and, and lecture. Hello. Hello. Am I audible? Hello. So please, can you hear me? Uh, hi, Deepya Muni. He's on mute. You go ahead. Hello. Yes. Hello. I unmute whoever there. But the thing is that get Swapnil. Swapnil, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Yes. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Um, <laughs> I have very briefly introduced you and. Uh, I mean, your effort and your, you know, importance, right, right, right. the reason you are here okay. for our students. Please, could you please start your lecture and your presentation so that okay. sure. our students get sure. a little bit something from it. Sure, sure. And, and sure. before you start, I start something. Rinki, can you hear me? Yes, sir, I can you hear you, sir. Inform everyone to join. Yes, Why sir, they are I'm... getting late? Uh, I'm informing you. Okay. Okay, so Phil, you can start, please. Sure, sure. Okay, so guys, so uh, hi. So so give uh, so actually gave you my brief introduction. Like I came from mostly gaming and esports background. Uh, we have a small startup known as Rebellion Esports. We mostly work into the esport industry where we hire you know people to play games in team on behalf of the company. And I've been working in the industry for the past six to seven years. And uh, I started my journey as a professional player. After that, I did my MBA for marketing. For that, there was some big call. Then, 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 so that's a little bit about me. And uh, so to this topic, when uh, people from US contacted me, they told me that I need to speak upon uh, importance of you know, visual storytelling and technique of visual storytelling. So to start with, I decided to you know narrow down it into two parts basically because uh, storytelling or video storytelling is a very tricky part. Because look, uh, any story, I mean, when you are tell story to people, definitely we expect them to react with that story, right? We want that our, our moment with the audience, basically. 
and that that's what we call the better stories so in gaming or even anime in animation field storytelling techniques or storytelling are very important part and to master it it requires you know uh, quite a good efforts uh, it's not that easy for the discouraging people but uh, that's the truth so to go with uh, let's go step by step so in first part of this presentation i will be telling you people what exactly storytelling is because just for under, first understand what exactly storytelling is but that's very important when you understand the basic of it when you understand how to craft stories for your games for your animated videos you will understand how to implement the visual thinking what exactly storytelling is so guys uh, it's very simple i mean story is nothing but a conversation right uh, you people must have uh, what what i can say you know when you sit with your friend in a with your friend in a long call or maybe in a canteen you start talking you start talking to each other and that conversation happens so basically maybe bitching about each other right <laughs> No, so not about each other, but bitching about some other friends to your besties. That's nothing but a story. That simply uh, the conversation that you had with your people, or you tell, or some kind of conversation that you tell other people. That's nothing but telling a story. So uh, the most important part about it is there is no one one side of the story, right? One one sided story. There is nothing such thing. So when you tell a story to someone that uh, the whole thing exists like uh, what we could say it's basically like a video going uh, going back on the mind of the people who is actually listening to it okay so doesn't matter whether it's you are reading a book whether you are telling a uh, story uh, through your mouth or uh, whether you are showing some video the idea is basically the same idea is nothing but telling them or having a conversation with your audience so that they would understand what exactly you want to say so that's the gist of storytelling basically so let's go with the part one where we'll go through different techniques of storytelling how should you go with the stories how should you crafted your stories before even before going for the visual aspect of it okay so when you go with uh, there is the same thematic genre similarities when it's come to gaming and animation too uh, look these slides i will be sharing with you people so that's why i put uh, you know all the content in it so so, so that you could use it you know as a as a tool for your exams and all, everything so just try to keep so there are you know as i said there are different type of uh, thematic similarity genre similarities between games and the book uh, for example there could be the genres like fantasy science fiction cyberpunk action thriller horror or war now this genres gives you different uh, tools or different power to establish the whole basic framework for your storytelling or for your whole project for example if you want to go with uh, you want to make a game or a cinematic uh, something like with the different weapons or something which uh, shows very much futuristic approach then obviously you will go with the cyberpunk or a fantasy genre right so selecting the, that genre is very important before even you start telling your story to to your audience 
So selecting a specific genre or a theme is very important. Okay, so uh, according to Odenel from Michigan State University, basically there are three fundament, fundamental or you could say the foundations of great stories. Okay, let's see what those are. Now, when you talk about the story or visual storytelling or anything, any context, story, because as I said, we are gonna, we, we're gonna, you know, put that groundwork even before we jump to directly to visual storytelling. So, whenever you go for the storytelling there there should be three pillars for that okay three foundation for that and what are those foundations basically the first is credibility credibility of your story so okay exactly the story should be critical whatever you are going to show your audience they think that it's credible it's credible content uh you could see that there is a word where uh, that uh, a player can maintain the suspension of disbelief. What is exactly the suspension of disbelief? You know, uh, whenever you create some content, uh, whenever you throw content to your audience, your audience should uh, should not try to think too much about it. I mean, they should accept whatever it is from you. They don't. Uh, they shouldn't be finding logic behind uh, something. You know, because look. Uh, for example, you take the uh, example of uh, how to train your dragons. When I see how to train your dragons, that particular movie, I see flying dragons everywhere. People making uh, the dragons pet. Uh, they are petting them like a dog. So when I see that movie, I don't think too much. I don't uh, go into that much of technic technicality of, you know, uh, basic technical that uh, whether dragons can be paid or pet or not. Well, I don't think that much. I simply put my logic aside. And I just trust my content creator or my developer. And that's what the uh, suspicion of disbelief means that play, that player or audience doesn't care about the logic. Okay. They just interested in your content. They just find the credibility of your content. So that's what the first pillar is coherent. So basically when you structure your story or you structure your uh, content, that content should be coherent. It must not be irrelevant to your audience. Uh, the next would be dramatically meaningful. So the meaningfulness of content should be there. So, so what exactly the type of story is that exactly we uh, put? Uh, while developing a game or developing a simple video clips animated video clips I would. so there are a few genres for example linear first one is a linear uh, it's the most traditional way of solution okay uh, for example let's take a, a game mario you know in mario there are simple story that uh, uh, princess uh, princess got kidnapped by one horribly small dragon <laughs> and then uh, Mario has to save uh, her princess from that dragon so basically it's simple story linear story there is nothing much interactive you can do with that story okay you start playing the game you just go clearing the levels and that's it so basically that gameplay and that story are two different things the story says that uh, uh, that dragon kidnapped the princess and Mario has to save her. And the gameplay is like you go uh, play or whatever you say. So that two different things. So basically, it's a linear approach to the study point. Next one would be the branching. Okay. Uh, when somebody, some developers develop a game where uh, you know uh, they give uh, certain points. Uh, while playing where uh, player can make some own choices so basically uh, when player make a choice a story goes in a different direction okay and uh, it might get a different ending so basically that's the branching uh, technique for the uh, developing a story next will be the parallel parallel path okay the 
parallel path is very simple. For example, take a uh, game uh, Tom Rider. Okay, in Tom Rider, basically what happens? There are so many small small missions, and there are so many parallel path. So it will increase your gameplay. It will increase your gameplay timing. But at the end, when it's come to the ending boss or the, at the end of the game, it's the same. Doesn't matter with whatever path you choose, the ending will be the same. So that will be the parallel path technique. Another will be the threaded story where you know the player can choose different plots at the beginning, and the game can have multiple beginnings, middle endings with a different combination of those elements also being available. So in threaded story, everything can be different. Uh, you give you develop a game, you give players a chance to choose different paths while playing, uh, and uh, that gives different ending. It could be different middle part, and it could be a whole different approach how the way players play your game. Okay, now. Uh, to go forward, so what exactly the basic five elements of the story? Tell me. The first is the story conquest. Okay, so uh, you think this might, I mean, this might come to you as an obvious thing. Uh, okay, okay, the story conquest. Obviously, what's what the, I mean, what exactly? You, a surprise surprise uh, factor in that. So the thing is, uh, it doesn't matter. I mean, um, to go with the what story come first is exactly doesn't matter how many uh, different elements to, to you add to your stories. Maybe there are uh, well, I don't that. central idea. Games revolved around the story that you put uh, or you give for audience, and the audience play around that uh, central idea. So that's what exactly is the story come first. Everything else is the is something that you put to make that story interesting. Okay. Uh, next would be the playing time. So uh, whenever you develop a game or whenever you started crafting your story for a particular project, you must remember that uh, playing time matters a lot to a player. For example, when you uh, you must have uh, played so many games and uh, there are cutscenes in the games, okay? So sometimes what happens, uh, uh, the Sony, the company like Sony or God of War are actually criticized for their cutscenes. There are too many cutscenes in those uh, those games that uh, people sometimes think that there are there is less gameplays and uh, game time or playing time and the more of the cutscenes. So when you give that much of cutscenes, that much of uh, cinematics into a gameplay, is basically what happens. People feel robbed. People thought that okay, I bought. I don't understand whether I bought a game or I just bought a some some movie. A movie or something like that. Okay, so that's what happens. So just understand that playing time is important. So how we you craft your playing times and cutscenes uh, is very important. Okay. Uh, so uh, yeah, there are some example like uh, Game of Wars. Uh, they actually uh, give some really good cutscenes, uh, and it ex exactly uh, related to their main characters and how the story builds from for them. Okay. So game development is based on keeping the players engaged by creating a game that keeps them actively involved. So that is the whole point of playing time factor. The next would be don't tell them, show them. What exactly that means? Well, uh, you know, we call it a session on storytelling, but exactly what, uh, uh, you know, when you go for the storytelling things, you exactly don't bore people with lots and lots of uh, content just like on these lives but i don't have any option anyway so you know you just give them some fun element that exactly they are interacting with okay uh, for example a gamer will feel uh, more you know more into some content or more into experience uh, even more uh, something which will be more a teaching experience for him 
when he exact when he uses his own intelligence or when he uses his own skills to you know uh, master the game or uh, to solve the puzzles of the game basically the whole thing is uh, the whole idea of don't tell uh, then show them is be is basically let them let them uh, give let them give that authority to interact with their own elements throughout the game don't uh, snatch that uh, form don't snatch that interactive part uh, from a player uh, the legend of zelda fantasy has managed to nail this aspect of the game okay they exactly gave them uh, the, when if you play the legend of zelda fantasy uh, what happened basically there are so many puzzles there are so many what would you could say a different different puzzles which players has to solve by themselves okay without any external help and that's what make that game really interesting really catchy okay the same thing is done by prince of persia franchise okay uh, where they use these uh, puzzle techniques and so that that factor where uh, players has to solve everything on uh, by themselves and which still uh, make the prince of persia franchise is one of the best game ever created so when developing draw on your own experience and think about games you love to play okay now the grounding so basically uh, when you develop or when you crafted a story or you started developing a game you should give details to everything for example uh, who is your main character what is uh, what is exact i mean what is relationship with different uh, aspect of the games uh, types of clothing okay uh, in the uh, state of the you know uh, walls dirt on the ground birds in the sky color color of the sky color of the clouds the sound that environment is making so everything is essential so getting everything you know, that we call it the grounding okay so making this thing from very scarce taking care of these things from the start is what makes your game even more realistic interesting and you know uh, really good content for your customers the fifth thing would be the obstacle so every game will be a boring game if there are no obstacles or there are nothing that uh, uh, that won't get unfold uh, when you go further and further okay so to keep a player in games we must hold their focus on unfolding the story okay building challenges is obviously important but they must never take over competitively challenging that the gamer loses interest so basically uh, when you give challenges uh, to the game uh, to your players they should be in a zone right we call it a zone uh, there is a flow chart Yes, in that zone. Okay, whether the game is not overly competitive and it's not too easy, because if it's overly competitive, player will get anxious. He will lose uh, and uh, he will stop playing. And if it's too easy, people will get bored and they stop playing. So, keeping that obstacle in a such a manner that player will uh, keep themselves in that zone is very important. Okay, now there are three approaches to storytelling in games. Using game. To tell your story. So basically, uh, what this exactly means? So basically, there is a whole story. You know the story. For example, there is a story of Harry Potter, right? Now you already know story. What exactly Harry Potter is? So the developer come and developer build or develop a game around that story. So basically, you are using a game to tell a story which exa already exists. So that's whole point of it. So using games to tell your story. Okay. Next would be using story to. Okay, using story to enhance your game. Okay. Now there are a few games that uh, use stories to enhance their gameplay. For example, Shadow of Colossus. Now Shadow of Colossus, when you play that game, or the Skyrim, when you play that game, you get to know that the whole scenario or whole thing is into the gameplay. Okay. The story, but then the developers use the storytelling to enhance the game experience. Because when you play the Shadow of Colossus, uh, you you feel that you got attached to that main character. 
that's how they you know make make story all around the whole gameplay so basically what they do here they use the story to enhance their gameplay inside here so okay so here we use our game to tell the whole story because theory already exists and we develop a game around the story here we develop a game and we use a story to enhance the gaming experience okay next would be unified writing and design so uh, to make you understand this better let's take an example of picture okay when you comes to franchise like a witcher uh, you witcher games exactly you know uh, adopted from saporsky original books and stories so basically when uh, you find something uh, like a witcher you exactly know how the story is how the story will unfold and how the plot will go further okay so the project cd project they exactly used that thing to advantage because they had they had the whole story they had the whole plot okay and uh, then okay the whole fiction supports what you can do in the game and the vice versa so uh, the developers realized that their game was about gerald of review a defined character already established in a book and they em embraced that as a design principle which then they rip ripple out across all the aspects of the game it's not really possible to break the illusion of playing as a geralt even when the game exists as a huge open world every action the player takes is supported and dependent their connections with the protagonist so basically in this approach uh, this is unified approach where you got a writing which we know the whole story you know the whole scenario and that the open and you design an open world game around that story where you play as a main character and the story revolves around the main character okay uh, so inside your story so basically uh, what we did so far we crafted uh, uh, we decided to what will be a plot we decided we decided the genre of the story genre of the uh, our game or genre of our the videos or the animated videos and now once we do what will Characters are extremely important. You can have one character or you can have many characters, it doesn't matter. But that characters should be in a sense, you know, in a synergy with the whole plot. So they need to bring something to the table. Uh, for example, when you play Prince of Persia, uh, two thrones, there are characters which you cannot interact that with. For example, the character of the Kailina. Okay. Kailina, the princess of Sir. But the thing with the whole story itself that you never never feel that that character is out of the context so making such a character is very important uh for example uh, another thing when you develop a character you should always give your character some characteristics for example you can you know you can make them a right hand dominant character you can make them allergic to few things you can uh you, you can enhance their motor skills or something like that so a character should have their own characteristics when you develop them uh, there are two examples as i said the example of uh, prince of persia and uh, the, the another example is the red dead redemptions there's a character in the red dead redemption that uh, uh you know Wes Dickens. Basically, he's a negative character. But when you play a game, you understand that this character is even you remember that character even after you completed the game. That's how they whole managed to plot uh, that whole character into the game. 
the next will be the dark prince in the sand of times the dark prince is not a hero but an antagonist okay uh, so he is much stronger than a, the main character and he helps him a lot to clear the levels but we all know from the start of the game that he is going to be the big problem or a bad need at the some point of the time but the character keep pushing the plot down well in few instances we even like the dark prince more than the original one so that's how you build a character doesn't matter a dark prince is a negative character and he is actually the last boss in that game but you you get liking towards that character even even more liking to that character than the main prince okay so that's the way you build your own characters now the player agents so you decided what your uh, character is what their character's character uh, what is the character skills and everything how the plot will go what will be the story and everything let's talk about play agency the play agency is tremendously important agency refers to the player's ability to act or control the actions in a specific environment okay remember when you develop a game uh, you should give maximum play agency to your players because you are developing a game or you are developing an uh, animated video to audience you are not doing that for yourselves you want your audience to like that game you want your audience to interact more and more with that game okay so here play agency comes into the picture uh for example uh, again the example of Witcher 3 Witcher 3 what happened uh, there was one fight uh, in a condom uh, where a negative character comes he hits the main character that is Geralt and uh, you want and then the fight started in between the fight there is a cut scene where one of his friend come between and he wants to save him but due to the due to the structure of the game we cannot save the character no matter how fast we will beat the negative uh, the villain or uh, that negative character no matter how fast you will be in no matter how weapon you will use your friend gonna die okay so that is actually taking the play agency away from a particular player of your audience so never do that uh, if give play agency give them more control to your uh, your audience give more control to your players okay uh, there's just uh, examples you could uh, actually I'm going to share this PPT, whole PPT uh, with the faculty. So uh, you gonna you, you can study the different case studies that I actually managed to. And the game exactly uh, this whole game exactly give the whole play agency to the players or the players because you can control everything into the game. Nobody into game will take that play agency that authority of playing or making any decision away from you so it's one of the very famous game and uh, it got many awards for you know such a approach where you give all the play agency to your players okay so the takeaway is play agency can be manipulated but it has to be carefully thought of if you if you take control away on the player without any context or a build-up, it will likely interrupt the player's experience. So let as much of the story unfold as you can with the player feeling like he or she is in control. So the basic fund is you need to tell your audience that you are into the control. We are not the one who are actually controlling the whole game or whole plot. Basically, you are the one, you are the god of the universe that exactly playing the character who is controlling the character. So you need to tell that to your audience next will be give your audience a credit like, look your audience are very smart people gamers are very smart people let me tell you okay so don't explain too much to the games don't uh, give too much of you know uh, that uh, what we call uh, too much tutorials into the game too much uh, explaining into the game Okay. Just let them take the charge. Let them uh, solve the whole thing on their own behalf. Okay. So don't reduce the cleverness of your story. Okay. Tell the story that you want to experience, and you want and you want them to experience as they as they as they, as they are into the game. Okay. So this is what giving your audience credit. Just. Think that your audience is smart enough to understand the game, smart enough to 
solve the whole whole game by themselves. Okay, so make sure you keep in mind while developing a game or developing a animated video. So basically, that would be the end of part one. As I said, uh, there will be the two parts of this. Now we are going to jump into the visual storytelling. Basically, how what kind of techniques you're going to use for the visual storytelling, how visual storytelling, what is a visual storytelling. And I know it must be like this only. I'm the guest lecturer. Other stuff. Okay. So this was the part one. This is going to be the part two. Okay. Okay. Visual storytelling. What exactly it is? A visual narrative or a visual storytelling is a story told primarily through the use of visual media. The story may be told using still photography, illustrations, or a video, and can be enhanced with graphics, music, voice, and other audio. So basically, uh, it to thoroughly go through what exactly story to how you should how you should approach the part of story telling because visual part is very simple once you understand the whole idea of basic story telling okay so why we need visual narrative look basically and uh, attention okay millions of data daily into its platform that much of content is getting added daily okay now uh, you could see your attention span is a problem for any marketer or for anyone who wants to create a content for you so it's a battle it's a dirty battle between the content and the attention span okay so uh, as I said, there are two opposing forces. The first is the content and second is the attention span. So content exposure, a dramatic and continually increase of in content production. So 4.6 billion pieces of contents are produced every day, according to Lingo. Can you imagine 4.6 billion pieces of content? And How enormous this data is, and it may data me could go to see co attention seek karna is a task, okay? Because it's always attention versus the fragmented uh, that attention, uh, sorry, the content versus the attention span. So, selective attention span that one that on one hand allows to be a banner blind, but at the same time, binge for four hours on the love is blind TV series on the Netflix. So, why it, why it is happening? When, when you see some video, you just switch off, uh, you just uh, take, out, take out that video from your side instantly. And then there are some videos you, which you watch for four or six hours continuously. We call it a binge watch, binge watch, right? So, what, what exactly is the difference? Where is the difference? Where you give no attention to some content and you give so much attention to some, some content, okay? So the whole scenario comes into visualization. There are two codes that, that support the effect of visual storytelling. Our human brain processes visual much faster than text. Okay. Visuals are processed 60,000 times faster than the text by the human brain. And 90% of information transmitted to the brain is a visual. So basically, why visual part is important? Because as we say that 60,000 times, the brain process 60,000 times faster than the text. That's the power of visual form. Okay. The human, human brain prefers information packaged as the stories. And here comes the story part. That's why visual storytelling is very, very important. 
hear more stories about everything they don't want your plain ads they don't want your plain content they want they don't want something you know which is not even related to them they don't want to see that they want something which comes into package of the stories they want something which comes into visualization aspects and that's why visual storytelling is very important so basically, there are ten simple rules of visual storytelling. First one is show, don't tell. Now, guys, you must have heard about the Charlie Chaplin. Do you know in Charlie Chaplin videos, the guy didn't even speak a single word, word, okay, not a single word. And that's the beauty about the Charlie Chaplin videos, Charlie Chaplin movies. And still, you will get the whole idea behind everything. What exactly he's doing? What the whole plot is? What he want to convey the audience? Everything, everything. Okay, that is the beauty. So, and why it is that? Why Charlie Chaplin is so uh, much successful to engage audience? Because he's putting that quality video, that quality visual, visual content. To the audience, okay. The uh, so basically showing them is the key. Just don't uh, bombard your audience with the content which exactly uh, which not even related to them, which which you could not uh, show them. Okay. So uh, just make a content which is more engaging, which can even communicate with your audience without speaking a single word or without typing a single word okay uh fine the second the second rule is the Suppose uh, you some you see someone uh, with a torn clothes, uh, you know, a disturbed hairs or muddy face. You might think that he's a beggar. And on the other hand, when you see somebody with a you know very classy suit, uh, very shiny boots, you get the impression that he must be some businessman or some actor or somebody like that. So the same thing. Okay, so so the same thing is happening with your visual content. When you put something uh, into your story, which, when you put something visuals, when you create a content into digital world, it first impression to your audience. Okay, audience should not get a wrong idea, or audience shouldn't be, get bored so when see first two or when they first see first. Or, First two or three seconds of your video or image. Okay, so that's very important. Crafting a visual to visual story or an image in a such a way that audience get hooked to it. So your first impression matters a lot. So where are we? Basically, the first first rule is showing them and not telling them. Second one is the first impression, making that really good first impression with your creatives with your videos. Doesn't matter. Okay. Next one will make your story move. So, creating such a visuals or creating such uh, impactful idea that should move from one part to another. It should give a proper idea of a story where where story begins, what is exactly the middle part of the story, and what exactly. It uh, is the end. It doesn't matter whether it's an image, whether it's a story, whether it's a video, or whether it's a GIF. The idea stick, stick for everything that you need to make your story move. So basically, developers and marketers are now adding movement to their visual stories by adding special effects using software and online sources such as the Bism. Okay, Bism, I, you must have heard about that tool uh, to animate their images. So keep that. Animated part, uh, you know, uh, it will make your image alive. It will uh, seek that attention span of your audience. So without a moment, the visual brain quickly grows bored. 
but by varying the angle and distance as well as by adding digital effect an image can capture viewer's attention much longer even if the object remains the same for example you could see that uh, story thing right it bounces so it exactly uh, your attention exactly bring your attention that is nothing it's just a simple story word it's nothing more than that but the way we animate it or the way we creating some angular movement to it gives it you know that power to seek your attentions so make your story move is the third rule for your storytelling approach fourth one is follow an arc okay every storytelling approach has an arc okay where incident takes place then comes the climax parts and then the ending part okay so very good story has a beginning a middle and the end jaise humne pehle पहले पार्ट में हमने ऑलरेडी उसको डिस्कस किया ठीक है थोड़ा सा सो अ प्रेजेंटेशन दैट रिमेन्स फ्लैट सच एट रैंडम सीक्वेंस ऑफ फैक्ट्स और गिव अ सम समबडी सम कंटेंट व्हिच एग्जैक्टली नॉट टेलिंग एनीथिंग व्हिच एग्जैक्टली व्हिच एक्चुअली इज नॉट गोइंग थ्रू द सीक्वेंस so whenever you give content whenever you develop a content make sure you are visualizing technique bringing three element into into your craft okay the beginning a middle and the end you could see in that image that uh, from start to the climax part you know the audience will be in the rising action phase where they will keep motivating themselves okay what will happen what will happen what will happen Okay, so the complex thing after climax, there should be a proper ending to your story. We we exactly telling your audience uh, how it will end and something like that. Okay. The next would be the conflict conflict equal stories. Okay, what exactly that means? Without some sort of conflict or an obstacle to overcome, there is no story. okay for example a uh, boy walks from the from home to school nothing happens along the way this was definitely a journey but no story obviously a boy walks from home to school nothing else is there but when you add a conflict into the story it get interested for example a boy walks a boy, a boy walk uh, started his journey from the home to school in between he met a mysterious man who gave him uh, a mysterious uh, book okay so basically now i am putting some interesting or conflicting elements to the story so allowing that conflict into your visualizing techniques is very important so don't forget to add that thing don't make it a plain clear narrative keep it okay next will be the next the sixth element will be the sixth rule will be reveal hidden things one of the rule of a good story is to take the audience to a hidden place that they don't get to see every day uh okay for example you must have heard about the movies like interstellar the jungle book the uh, the lost world you know when you hear these titles you get to you get an idea that okay i am going to see something extraordinary today okay because that's what it is so give that uh, what you could say element of uh, hidden hidden things to your audience to put that such a visualization visualization such a craft that it will give something wow or something really that your audience might not expecting it to your audience and give that some give something like that to your audience okay it will help a lot to uh, seek your attention seek the audience attention it will help a lot to build the audition or audience in the future so keep that in mind that you need to explore that hidden areas you need to explore that wow moments into your stories okay next will be people love people so think about heroes in your favorite movies what a few uh, exceptions they tend to be the every man 
the average joey who just happens to find himself in extraordinary circumstances obviously uh, whenever you see a movie for example bajangi bhai jo right salman khan who is in same a character of bajangi into that movie right uh, a salman khan a simple guy named pawan and then uh, suddenly uh, a, a small girl came came into his life and then he uh, go on a journey which changed his entire life now you can connect the character of pawan like he is like you and me so basically people love people what that means exactly that we need such a masterpiece that people should be able to connect with our uh, work right whatever we are going to give people they should be able to connect with it they should understand okay no that's what okay seventh rule will be the teach the audience okay visual storytelling is a such an effective teaching technique in fact that the method is frequently used as a teaching tool in classroom around the world teacher find they can often use visual media to engage student otherwise distracted in the digitized world where slide shows of the past might put student to sleep animated presentations and interactive media are exciting ways to present the lessons obviously why this visual storytelling or visual techniques are on Obviously, people tend to sleep, right? This is what happens because these things are not interactive. But when somebody shows something, you know, visually interactive, you get you get my attention. This is what used to happen in our brand management class. We, you know, there was this professor, Professor Kamle, and he used to teach us the brand management. And he was the only teacher. He was the only professor. He who used to use a lot of videos while teaching us okay different videos animated videos ad videos and the whole class uh, used to focus like anything else uh, in his lectures so that is the power of visual techniques when you use something uh, something you when you use the visual techniques to get the attention spans you actually asking for more attention you are actually for you know that longer time spans where you could engage your audience so that's why uh, you know that's why you need to put this visual technique to teach the audience that should be include eye catchers and i can do okay so basically if it, there are, doesn't matter if it's a video or it's an image but it should be the eye catchers for example when you see something like uh, i don't know how many of you are anime anime fans but when you see something like ramen noodles or when you see some uh, smoky hot video of pizza okay you can actually you can smell the smell that pizza that's what exactly the eye catchers are eye catchers are such a creative such a image such a visual techniques that you putting and you are making people visualize the whole story behind that single picture so you need to uh, make such a you need to craft such uh, such a images such a videos that it will vividly recall them vividly recall them smell sounds and even taste of the uh, things that you are actually putting into your uh, craft okay sec next ninth rule will be the hold your focus while the best virtual storytellers are cognizant of the most striking images they also know the best important elements is the message so don't get lost into the details now look guys we need to develop a story we need to tell a story we need to visualize the things so don't get attached too much to the details because i will give you a very good example uh, in few next slides why you need to focus uh, mostly focus on your story and you know your visual visual storytelling is rather than going and giving uh, details or 
going and you know giving details to you is uh, important to small elements because wo kehte hain ki simplicity mein hi bhagwan hai so that's actually the truth that's holds true so focus mostly hold your focus on what exactly you want to convey to your audience short and sweet is the best okay audience are already exposed to an endless streams of visual and information and you will quickly lose their attention if you bore them with the too many details so basically forget about the details give them what they want okay tell them exactly what you want to tell them don't bore them with small details and that's why they already have so many information stored into their brain that you don't need to tell every small detail about everything so just focus this focus on your simple story and tenth is the hitchcock rule i hope you must have heard about the alfred hitchcock he is one of the greatest uh, visual storyteller of all, of all time okay so according to the according to his rule the size of any object in your frame should be proportional to its importance to the story at the moment okay just listen to this statement once again the size of an any object in your frame should be proportional to its importance to the story at the moment in other words uh image that are you know pertinent to the story basically so you need to manage you need to manage the size of the object in such a way that where what exactly uh, you know uh, in that particular moment what exactly is happening and according to that you need to give importance to the object whichever are into the frames so that's really a ground rule from the alfred hitchcock whenever you are adapting any creative or or doing any art work okay so these are basic 10 rules for uh, visual storytelling so what are the basic techniques for the visual storytellers be sure you visual content is built on the top of top of this fundamental storytelling techniques first is conflict we discussed it uh, in the rules too okay that we need a conflict whenever we going to you know uh rules so every good story has obstacle that needs to be overcome the more you more your audience can relate to the conflict the more your message will resonate with them so that's what we because conflict is what make audience stick to the content so make sure whenever you are making a small piece of content small piece of visual make sure you are giving some kind of conflict into it so that people could relate to it next is the structure from ancient time guys structure structure is very important okay so uh, it's not just what is uh, structure basically structure is basically a particular narrative at that particular moment okay it's not just about uh, having the beginning middle and the end okay your part of your video story should be meaningful and help propel the narrative towards its climax and conclusion what's exactly that means that means uh that every every moment in your uh, whole visual approach or storytelling approach is, should be uh you know should be narrating towards something else into your stories so basically it should be a journey it should not something like a single moment where you come and that ends no it should be a journey where one thing is giving a path or giving a narrative to another thing okay so things should be connected things should be in a proper structure where everything is connected and it itself is told telling uh, one story about another structure next would be simplicity as we as we go this at the focus point the rule hold on focus so why we say we need to hold the focus because when you focus mostly on to what the basic idea or exactly what you want to give to your audience you come up with something with like uh, among us i don't know how many of you play the game among us but these games 
that game actually uh, made a huge wave in past few months. Okay, that game uh, got one of uh, the best game awards on the platform iOS and uh, this Android. Okay, the best game of the year. And I mean, there are so many awards that showered. And when you go for the gameplay, it's very simple. Nothing. There is nothing in the game. There are simple small uh, characters a sm small map simple map okay and then nothing that much of complicated things so basically they never all complicated the things okay that's why keeping it simple is very important so stories that leave the biggest impact can be summed up in a one or a two sentences Okay. If you find your visual story is bringing in too many threads, try pairing things down to get back to your core message. Okay, that goes for designing too. Overly detailed or complex visual elements could be distracting and draw attention away from the from more you know pretty end points of interest. So that's the whole point. Keep things simple. Make sure the whole plot revolves behind your simple idea. Don't complicate the things. Example among us. Okay. Simple game. Nothing complicated. Simple gameplays. Simple characters. Okay. Next will be the contrast. So uh, you know, using the contrast element is very important while developing your storytelling approach. So uh, one example is uh, a 35 year old movie count as modern. How why? Because you know. In back to the future or not, but in back to the future, uh, there's this main character who travel to the very past or travel to a uh, future basically from the past, and when he went there. You could see the difference between two visualization techniques. When you see his character and the character uh, uh, from the uh, futures, you could clearly see the difference of visualizing techniques where you could get that contrast. And from that contrast, you could easily derive that he's from the past and he's from the future. So you need to keep that contrast in mind while designing your approach, okay, while designing your character. Okay, size. Next in the size. So again, we come to Mr. Hitchcock. So, so basically, one of his basic filmmaking rules was to draw viewers to more important objects on the screen by making those items bigger than the everything else. Okay, so this is even the rule and the basic technique of visual storytelling. Make sure that whenever you are directing some incident. To your creative, if a character is more important than the others, you actually bring it to forward, you increase its size, and that's how you put that whole thing into the picture, and that's how you make the whole thing, uh, you know, in a proper way so that people could connect with it properly. So that's the Hitchcock approach. Okay, so remember that. Draw viewers to the important object on the screen by making those items bigger than everything else. This is a very standard technique. Okay. So basic, these are the next part will be the elements of successful video story. What elements should be there? Look, uh, these elements are from the marketing point of view too, because storytelling is actually brought up into the scene by marketers themselves. So marketing is very important. Uh, I want to go in the details of uh, them because just I'm going to share. So, I already mentioned the details of the health to it. So, I'm going to go through them and read them exams or whatever it may be. So, elements of successful storytelling are customer as a hero, story duality, make it relatable, make it engaging, make it believable. Bigger purpose and empowerment of marketing. Okay. So, whenever I say customer as a hero, that you need to understand whenever you make sure that 
okay uh story durability means you have to understand that uh, uh, there should be you know double mirror effect to tell a story that makes uh, people feel better about themselves okay which in turn leads viewers to take this new perception to their external relationships so it's a multiplying effect when you when they see us your story they will feel something good they will ask the others to see it so it also brings a uh, viral effect to your graph okay make it relatable make sure that whatever you make it should relate somewhere where uh, for example doesn't matter what you make you should relate to someone from your audience for example if you creating a craft which uh, focusing on the kids it should relate to kids if it is uh, for a adult audience you should uh, relate to that audience it should not be mismatch that i'm creating a content for kids and i'm serving it the adult uh, or a, uh, adult category or uh, to people who are into you know like uh, drama films and i'm making a film which is animated film so you should not mis mismatch it you should which make a relatable content to relatable audience make it engaging obviously uh, the more engaging your content the more viewers you will get okay make it believable uh, okay so make it believable doesn't mean that uh, you cannot put a dragon into your story what exactly it means exactly it should be uh, in a such a way that you can build that first part the uh, the visual storytelling techniques and they they start to make it believe doesn't matter whether they are putting a logic on it okay so uh, we came to the final part do's and don'ts of the visual storytelling so what are the do's uh, start by crafting an interesting story that will appeal to your audience. So that's why we actually, in first part, we mostly focused on only story part of the aspect side. Right? We directly, we never directly jump to the uh, visual storytelling. We mostly focus on how you should craft your story first, and then go to the visual part. So that's why uh, crafting an interesting story is very important. Choose your visual visual media according to the need of your narrative. Look. You need to choose your media, what exactly you want to show, how exactly you want to show them, whether it's a creative, whether it's a, a GIF, GIF, whether it's a, a whole video, it doesn't matter. So you need to choose that media accordingly, according to your story. Okay. Incorporate basic storytelling techniques. We already uh, saw everything, right? This whole storytelling technique, the whole uh, laws of storytelling okay the rules of storytelling just incorporate them okay make sure you are actually putting everything you are actually uh, thinking about the whole scenario the whole points that we discussed before starting your storytelling, up storytelling approach grab people's attention right off the bat with the dynamic image obviously attention span right so gathering attention is very important so that's why make something uh, whatever that that whole use the laws of storytelling because you need to make a dynamic image learning, right and that's how you grab the people's attention support your visual narratives with the text and audio to add context whenever needed obviously use whatever tools you need to use to tell your story if you want to uh, for example, if you want to if you want to use text, use it. If you want to use the audio, use it. Okay. So context matter. The, it's not like some uh, every time the whole picture will tell the whole story. Sometimes you need to put the words too. So context is very important. So just play around the context. Use your visual narrative accordingly. Okay. Keep your message clear and simple. As I told you, by simplicity me Bhagwan. Okay. So Keep it as simple as possible. Don't overcomplicate that thing. Best example among us, right? Simple game, simple characters, simple plot, and the huge success, huge hit. Okay. 
measure the performance of visual media with relevant KPIs like social shares, backlinks, and site metrics. Well, the last thing is for the people who are actually interested uh, into putting their uh, content over social medias or who wants to make their content viral. Okay, so obviously, when once you uh, develop your craft, once you develop the whole uh, whole story or whole narrative, you put it to your audience, right? Then, I think that performance is very important. So, make sure uh, you keep the track uh, of uh, you keep major performance. How we measure performance? You use the key performing indicators that we call KPIs, like uh, shares, actually. Now come the. Why? Because look, not everybody from your audience are actually interesting at a particular means. So don't chase it. Don't stop making content. Uh, uh, or rather say, stop making whole the con whole content around the means. So make sure you come up with something original. Okay. Uh, Shuhan a narrative into a specific visual idea. So basically you need to narrow it down. Uh, uh, you should never narrow it down to one specific audio, idea. Uh, basically you should not get stereotyped, okay? You should keep evolving, you should keep uh, exploring different uh, uh, ideas and you should keep uh, generating more content and that's it. Uh, prioritize styling over substance. Uh, repackage the same story across every virtual media podcast. This, they are a good match. Okay, so don't uh, try to uh, repackage, you know, same story across every visual media. I mean, uh, for example, don't take uh, a story which you gonna share with your audience through a video, and then don't try to do it over visuals. Like, uh, uh, for example, presentation or something like that. We just, you know, uh, what we make in Cano or something like that. So don't do that. Try to make uh, different content for different approach. If it's a video, uh, video visualization technique, then definitely you need to add something else. If it's simple uh, creatives that you're gonna make into Cano or uh, that you make you're gonna make into Photoshop, then put some different content. Okay. Go over it on imaginary and wind up confusing or distracting your target audience. So don't ever confuse your audience. If you are making going for uh, making any uh, stories, you are crafting any stories. Don't confuse your audience. Keep it simple. Uh, make sure uh, your audience will uh, love the content you are making. They could uh, they could imagine what exactly you want to see. Okay. Uh, remove audio and text just for the sake of having 100% visual story. Don't do that. If you, I mean, sometimes what uh, uh, storytellers do that they remove uh, audio and text just because they want to show 100% visual story. So don't do that because sometimes it will confuse your audience and sometimes it even not look good. Whenever there is a necessary, put audio. Whenever they are necessary, put text. Okay, and that's how. You actually build a good uh, stories and uh, build a good visuals. So that's it, guys. Uh, this is basically what, in a nutshell, what storytelling, uh, the visual, visual storytelling is about. Okay. Uh, you could see it's in the magnet form, and that's how you attract your audience. If you follow this whole magnet structure, share, uh, make it believable, okay, empowerment of marketing. Higher purpose, customer as the hero, story duality, make it relatable, make it engaging, feels as the entertainment. Okay. Just keep this in mind and you are good to go. That's all. I hope you get it all and enjoyed it. Well, if not, then well, you know, you know the rest. Okay. So fine. That's it, guys. Uh, that's it from my side. Okay. Thank you. If you want to connect, uh, please do connect me on Insta and Twitter. My handle is Wizard of Varela and my Facebook. Uh, uh,
as i said i'm going to share this whole ppt with uh, sir and with you people also i mean if you want uh, if you if you have class representative to one from a girl or girl side one from a boy side just message me on insta and i will send you the whole ppt in a pdf format and it will help you a lot because uh, though it's very difficult to share all things uh, in a better way through this online interaction thing because you know i never did it before i used to go to colleges and give it face to face so it was kind of tough for me uh, but uh, i tried my best and uh, but the content i put in this ppt is very important it will help you a lot uh, during your journey so don't miss out just read that content i'm definitely going to share the whole uh, whole ppt with you people just ping me wherever you want. Uh, I'll be responsive and I'll definitely uh, reply you back. Thank you, guys. Uh, that's all from my side. Uh, hi, Sopnil. Hello. Uh, hi, Sopnil. Priyanka here. Hello. Yeah, Priyanka. Yeah, thank you so much. Hello, yeah, yeah. Hello. Yeah, I'm audible now. Yes, yes, it is audible. Okay, okay. Yeah, thank you so much uh, for the session, Sopnil. All the students have benefited. Thanks a lot. Sure, sure. It's yeah, my pleasure. I'll actually. Uh, wind up the session. Uh, thank you so much. Sure, sure. Yeah. And uh, please just uh, ask uh, somebody from both sides, like from girls. Uh, sure, sure. PPT with their group. I mean, obviously they they must be having their own WhatsApp group. So sure, sure. Uh, sure. Mr. Deepya Man uh, will be in touch with you for this. Sure, sure, sure. Okay. Uh, you please interact with him, and uh, he will circulate with the students. Sure, sure. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir. Thank you, guys. Uh, guys, do you have any questions?